Hello everyone, I am Kim with Abundant Life Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me. We are doing another unboxing video. You know how I love these. So, so this time this is for the wonderful Lua Tarot. I already took it out of the package that it arrived in and it shipped, didn't have far to ship to be honest. Um, Go ahead and I need to get a proper box cutter, but I don't plan on doing much any unboxing. But still, actually, I need to get something better than scissors. Okay, here we go. The box is like this matte film, but it's not too too matte. You know, like there's. Not that you could ever be too, too matte, but you know, there's that thick, almost, it almost feels like you're touching some sort of, um, microfiber material. It almost feels that matte. And then there's just like a more satiny matte. And that's what this is. It's more satiny. And here's the back. Love the box. This is Lua Tarot. Lua features black and white tarot cards created using 19th century engravings of landscapes and people from around the globe. Includes 78 tarot cards, an alternate judgment card evolution, a title card, and a comprehensive instruction booklet. And the creator is the lovely Marie Bento. And I had the pleasure and delight of meeting her on a couple of occasions at the Northwest Tarot Symposium. And um, I own the Divine Muses. Oracle, which I adore. Let's take this out. So here's my indie version. She's got a signed copy here. And she's just a lovely person. I mean, here's the Divine Muses. It's kind of got this antique feel to it, right? So I, I knew that I wanted uh, to have a tarot deck that I think would work well with it. And I just also really wanted to support this project. Because like I mentioned before, I met her at the Northwest Tarot Symposium twice. The first year, um, I believe, did I, did I get this from her then? I, I think maybe I did. Maybe. Or did I order? I can't even remember now. I'll have to check my spreadsheet, my handy dandy spreadsheet to see where I purchased it from. But we talked about this deck and then we talked about her. Um, she has another tarot deck and the name escapes me right now. I don't have that deck. But she was in the last Northwest Tarot Symposium, the one I went to in 2020, this past year, she was saying, she mentioned this deck and she showed it to me and she showed me like, you know, the prototype and I fell in love and I said, I'm absolutely going to support it when it comes out because I know she's an incredible creator and you know, I just had no doubts about supporting the project. So it's, look at this book. Oh, it's nice and chunky and, and near and dear to my heart as a collector and as someone who is so grateful for decks that fit in these small boxes. The book fits inside the box. Very, very important. I know it's not always possible, and that's okay, right? You know, but thank you. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Sorry for the glare. Let me see. There we go. There we go. All right, let's look here. Okay, here's inside the box. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I just know, you know? I knew back when that I was going to love this deck and you know you just have a feeling as above so below and she has a quote I'm assuming it's Latin or French could be French I don't know but I will look it up later but here let me show you it would be French I think it's French yeah, so I don't want to butcher that for that this little sentence. It's like a couple of sentences, actually. All right. 
And then there was a thank you card. And um, it's beautiful. Thank you, Marie. And now we'll look at the cards. And it just has this little slip or sleeve here. You can just take the cards out. That's what sometimes I do. Okay. Now on this one, here's like the title card. And here's the card back. Reversible. 2020 is when this first edition was created and I pre-ordered it and then it's now here on my doorstep. She, you know, was it was just e an easy decision to decide to pre-order the deck. Now it's probably available for purchase if you go to divinemuses.net, uh, I believe, right? Divinemuses.net. Let's go get started with going through the cards. Okay, so here's the, it's like a traditional tarot size. Let me see, do I have, I wanted to see if I have a traditional size tarot and I don't right near me. Um, here's the Divine Muses and the Divine Muses is in a more, you know, sepia colored look. Whereas this one is black and white, which is fine by me because I don't really have a lot of black and white decks. I have a few and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this one, but I took a chance. Here's the Seeker. This. I'm also, here's the Magician. Beautiful. I was like, I knew I didn't have much, anything really like this in my collection, so I went ahead and was like, I'm gonna get it. It's gonna be a death year violation. <laughs> the high priestess. You all know about my death year situation. You've been following my journey. The Empress. This is amazing. I'm looking at it as I'm showing you the card. So if you see me kind of glaring off in the distance, I'm looking at the screen so I can see it too. Oh my goodness. Look at the Emperor of this brown. It's borderless. And it's this satiny matte fill, which I really appreciate. And sound of it in my ears it just sounds amazing it's, it's I think it's gonna riffle beautiful riffle shuffle beautifully here's the hierophant look at the lovers let me get that glare off bring it over here so you can see it over here I really love the chariot. Strength. The hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Justice. And I know she went through a painstaking process of creating this, um, like dig digitally creating this artwork and to have it then be a part of a whole, you know, 78 card deck, right? So it's quite amazing, I think. This is the hanged one. Really like that. Look at Oh my goodness. Temperance. If 
feeling the weight of the balance of the four pillars and the flames. Is it flames? Yeah. I forgot what you call this. Um, part man, part horse. I forgot. Ooh. Starts with a P, I think. Um, the devil. Oh my goodness, I'm such a fan of the tower, the volcano. Does she talk about this? Let's see. Okay, now she doesn't talk about her wonderful process, but it is quite cool. And I'm wondering if the guidebook gets a chance to mention it, the star. I'm gonna uh, hurry along because I want to look at the guidebook as well as shuffle. There's the sun. Judgment. Hmm. Evolution as judgment. The world. I'm liking that it's just not even gilded. It's just giving us straight cards and unadulterated, like, just card amazingness, right? Because we have borderless. We have a good stock, like the card... It's a good stock. Let's see. I can't wait to see how it shuffles. Look at the detail on that. Let me see. Can you get that? That's the Ace of Wands. Here's the Two of Wands. Unadulterated card amazingness. I'm so crazy. Six of Wands. <laughs> Seven of Wands. Good, strong, traditional Eight of Wands. Or traditional to the Smith weight. Right? Nine of Wands. into the courts we have the page page of wands the knight the queen queen of wands and the king of wands here we move into the ace of cups amazing Here's the Two of Cups. The Three. The Four. Oh, so beautiful. The Five of Cups. Here's the six. Seven of cups. Wow, this is interesting. Should I learn it? Eight of cups. You can see that she is I don't know if this is some sort of like 
mountainous range. Kind of like it reminds me of like what Yosemite has going on. You know, jetting up out of the ground and into the sky. And there's a moon and a lady. And there's... She's moving towards higher ground, that's for sure. See all of that? Nine of Cups. Ten of Cups. Page of Cups. Knight of Cups. Hmm. Queen of Cups. Like this, she's a little round, you know? That's what I think of with the Queen of Cups for some reason. Round and voluptuous <laughs> in my mind. King of Cups. Ace of Swords. Mm. Two of Swords. Three of Swords. Mm, I really adore this Four of Swords. My goodness. You can see the person laying in. In the way there. Wow. That's just beautiful. Beautiful. Five of Swords. Hmm. Six of Swords. Seven of Swords. Hmm. Eight, eight of Swords. Hmm, I really like the Nine of Swords. You cannot sleep. He just has to go ahead and get out on that. Ooh. Ten of Swords. And no swords to be found. But you can feel the air energy in this suit. Page of swords. Knight of swords. Queen of swords. King of swords. Ace of Swords. Two. Two of Swords. Two of Swords. What am I doing? I got Swords on the brain. Back up. You're like, what are you doing? Ace of Coins. Why do I have the two of Swords on the brain? I'm just going to go right to it. In the guidebook. So, Two of Swords, the Lord of Peace restored, and then she has um, Moon and Libra, and then the, the key words, choice, stalemate, truce, compromise, indecision, suspend judgment, conflict of two minds, peace. And then she has um, a couple of paragraphs that go into the meanings, or into the card meanings, which I like. That's a nice, smart guy, but I can't wait to go into it. We'll look at it in a moment. But sometimes when that happens, I'm like, there's a reason. It'll And probably when I see the Two of Swords again, it's going to really hit me as to what it's speaking to. I kind of have an idea. Ace of Coins, we're going to start this suit over again. Two of Coins. Three of coins. I like that 
she doesn't have necessarily like, you know, pentacle coins, you know, or sticks or wands or swords, you know, and daggers or such. She has images that it evoke that energy. So I really appreciate that, as you see with the Four of Coins. So for the seasoned reader, it gives us something. And then also for the new reader, it gives you something that's a fully illustrated deck, right? So it, it helps you to go off into those little nuanced details of each of the images and really um, ignite your intuition as well as to help you pull, recall some of those um, traditional book meanings. And, and over time, as you get more seasoned as a reader, you start to come up with your own meanings that kind of blend both your intuition and the book meaning, so to speak. So, but for us who have been doing this a while, it, it's just, it's nice to have a fresh take on how you approach the tarot, five of coins. And I, I'm appreciating how she's approaching it. Six of coins. seen that seven seven of coins uh, eight of coins nine of coins ten of coins And it's such a deck that you really could use it in client readings, you know, there's nothing, you know, crazy, overt, scary. There's no swords that are stabbing anyone. So it really is, you know, it could be an all-rounder for some people, page of coins. Knight of coins. Queen of Coins, which I just adore. That Earth vibe from her for sure. And then King of Coins. Okay. Oh, he has a familiar face to me, a familiar energy. King of Coins. All right, so. Uh, it just isn't just, oh my goodness, overhand, it just, <laughs> to shuffle it is a dream, like really and truly, okay, I'm just going to see if it's, I don't know, like, if it's like, um, what do you say, like 350 GSM, I have no clue, I don't always pay attention like I should, you know, <laughs> But it's not one of those things I necessarily am really overly concerned about because you guys know I prefer to have a deck that I can ruffle shuffle. Oh my goodness, it ruffle shuffles beautifully. So that's more important to me. So I'm not so concerned with, I don't, I just don't want a super thick deck. You can have actually like 350 GSM or higher and it, it depends on other factors that make it make it shuffleable or not, but I've had some that are super thick that you just you can't shuffle it. It's even oh, difficult to shuffle overhand. So this one not the case, not the case at all. So we'll see, Spirit. Oh, thank you. I was gonna ask for a card. We have the Page of Swords. Nice. And then we've got this cute little guidebook here. Created and written by Marie Bento. And with gratitude, she has a with gratitude section. I wonder if this is the quote in here. I don't know. 
But there's a quote that says, when you drop the idea of predicting the future, you start to experience the cards as a mirror of the psyche. That's when pl when playing with the tarot becomes a path to wisdom. Philippe Saint Genou. Gen Table of contents. We've got an intro, the arcanas, the numerology, and tarot about the creation. Nice. She does go into that. The major arcana, the four virtues, a numbered major arcana. There's supposed to be a bonus card. I must have missed it. But we'll see though. She has an appendix. So this is actually because here's her guidebook to her Divine Muses Oracle, which is quite chunky. And this is still giving us a lot here, but it's you know distilled. She's got the um the introduction of Tarot. She talks about, you know, the suits, numerology. She goes through like zero to ten. Really awesome. I love when creators add bits of different elements like astrology, numerology, um, talking about the elements into their guidebooks because it really, you know, every little bit helps on the journey of learning the Torah, right? Um, the majors, she has, they are the seeker. Huh. Wait, she talks about elements here. Three of the major arcana cards are connected to the primitive elements. They are the seeker, air, the hanged one, water, and judgment, fire. She has the four virtues and the numbered major arcana. And then she starts to go into the card meanings. And then what's cool about her minor arcana section is she's got like this little um, chart here. You can't see it because of the glare. There it is. It's really cool. Like kind of goes over the different attributes of each of the elements of so the wands, fire, the spirit, energetic, inspiration, passion, optimism, action, wills. This is cool. Astrological associations. That's always fun to know and add as an element to your readings. Uh, wands. So that's the fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Cups, water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, swords, air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and coins, earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And so sometimes if you are doing readings for people and they want to know if it's, you know, who's, how will they know who the next love interest is, and you get some uh, minors that come up, and then you can be able to say, well, you know, this person may have... Um, you know, some fire um, signs in their chart or what have you. Court cards. She goes into, I mean, she really goes into great detail for the minors, and I really appreciate that. She gives age approximations for the pages, knights, queens, and kings. And I won't go into all of that for time's sake. And then also, if you want, you can definitely check this deck out yourself and, and get it. Um, I think in the back, she does have a lot of spreads in the back of this, this guy. But oh my goodness, she even, she has some appendix. Oh, I can't think of what this says. The titles for the personality type 16 personalities website. Oh, that's cool. She adds that even. Yes or no appendix section. Astrology keywords. I mean, bibliography. And then an about the author. And I thought there was a... Oh, and then she talks about... Uh, the different decks she has. She has the Antiquarian Lenormand, the Antiquarian Tarot, and the Divine Muses Oracle, which I have. And I think I did purchase it from her. Pretty sure. Where's the creation? About the creation. Page 16. Let's see what that's about. 
Lua is the Portuguese word for the moon. The moon's shades of gray and silvery luminous luminous are reflected throughout the deck's work. It is. You can see that. As the cards took shape during the creation process, their dreamy and soft quality inspired the deck's naming. And she says, Lua Tarot was created using 19th century engravings of landscapes and people from around the globe. Uh, so she says, when I first came across one of the intricately engraved images, I instantly got entranced by the details and artistry of the work and became wholly inspired. If you find yourself in awe of the images in this deck too, we have we have those incredibly talented engravers to think. All of the engravings used in this deck were published in the 19th century and originally came from books, weekly illustrated magazines, catalogs, and ads. Oftentimes these engravings show two artists' signatures because an engraver might cut an artist's work to put into print as a reproduction. So she goes into great de detail about that. And with Lua, I strive to excavate some fragments from that short period of time, combining portraits with the timeless landscape to create a tool that can be used by practitioners of magic, ancestral healing, and inner work. It's a portal, she says. Um, so I'll save the rest for another time. And then we'll look at the card meaning for the Page of Swords. We have the Lotus of the Palace of Air, Throne of the Ace of Swords, Earth of Air. There we go. Curious, focused, alert, talkative, restless, daring, just, ethical, truth, study, research, and energy of discovery and courage. A thoughtful page holds a small owl in her left hand, a symbol of wisdom and air. The sky depicts the expansive mental world that she is starting to discover. Pages are the tarot's messengers, and this one brings messages about decisions as well as truth and justice. Since the pages are connected to their ace, this card can also be about beginning of an idea or project. It can be in technology or any path of discovery that has one eagerly studying and researching a topic. Page of Swords loves to learn and has have a gift of thinking outside of the box. They are innovative, curious, studious, and problem solvers. So, wow, that is the Page of Swords. So, yeah, that is the glorious Lua Tarot. Oh my goodness, I've been looking forward to this deck all year since I learned about it at the Northwest Tarot Symposium. I could have switched angles and showed you guys that way and um, I will do unboxings in the future where I do a much traditional setup but I didn't feel like I just wanted to just sit here and, and experience the cards at the same, the same time that you do. And there you have it. That is the unboxing of the Lua Tarot. Do you have this gorgeous deck in your collection? Is it on its way to you? Um, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments section below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. All right, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I will see you all in the next one. Take good care of yourselves.